Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department presents this series to support healthy lifestyle choices for our children and families. I'm Anna Wishart, the community spokesperson for Let's Move Lincoln and GO team member of 54321GO, led by the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Have you heard of the 54321GO health message? Do you know what the countdown numbers stand for? Well, in this episode, you're going to learn about number five. Five stands for getting five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Eat your fruits and vegetables. We hear it all the time, and it's because they are very important for good health. Most fruits and vegetables are naturally low in fat and calories, and they're very filling. And healthy diets rich in fruits and vegetables may reduce the risk of cancer and other chronic diseases. Now, I am extremely excited to share some of the great collaborative efforts done through what we call the GO Team. The GO Team is made up of over 30 community organizations working together to implement strategies within their organizations that benefit the health of children and families they serve. Let's see what some of our GO Team members are doing to promote five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Okay, so I am here today at the Fallbrook Farmers Market, which is located at 570 Fallbrook Boulevard. And this market is open from 4.30 to 8 o'clock every Thursday during the summer. And I'm here today with Megan, who is the market manager for the Fallbrook Farmers Market and also for the Old Cheney Farmers Market. So Megan, can you tell us what the benefits are for shopping at a farmers market? Absolutely. So this is where you have your most, the most variety for local fresh producers. Many of these markets are one-stop shops mm -hmm. for your produce, of course. It's all seasonal and fresh, yeah. picked sometimes within, you know, that, that morning or yeah. the day before. Meat, eggs, cheese. Um, I, Branch Stoke has dairy, or has yogurt now. And then you get to know, you get to know your farmer. Um, and these are the folks that know best what to do with those kind of odd vegetables like kohlrabi. So your farmers are some of the best resources for just getting to know your food, getting to know how it's produced, where it's coming from, um, getting recipes. And who, uh, who are the types of people that generally come to this farmer's market at Fallbrook? Oh, everybody. I, it, and it, there's such a diversity um, from, uh, it's very, this market in particular is very family friendly. We have, uh, every week we have a bounce house. It's free. <laughs> we have live music, uh, kids activities. Mm -hmm. So very family friendly. Um, and then you, a lot of these markets and the vendors at these markets also uh, accept the senior coupons. So you can go to your market and buy direct from your, your farmer your, from, with the senior farmer's market coupons too. And what other kinds of payments, payments do they accept here at the I'm farmer's glad market? glad you asked, Anna. <laughs> uh, Fallbrook has just, uh, just started doing the accepting SNAP, well, all of our, all cards, so credit, debit, or the SNAP EBT, so the, the SNAP was the formerly known as the food stamp okay. program. We're accepting those now. You just swipe that EBT card, mm -hmm. the, the debit card you get with those, with your food stamps, and you get these little wooden, no, wooden tokens, what did it say, nickels? They look a little like, like chips. Yep. Yep, okay. to use at, at that farmer's market. Mm -hmm. You can get, you know, send your kids off with a treat and go let them run around a farmer's market and then do your, do your week's worth of shopping. Um, or get them involved with the shopping. You know, the, the colors, the, um, the, the odd vegetables that they're like, what in the world would this be? Great opportunities to introduce your kids to, to new fruits and vegetables. And if they're into it or, you know, get a token, yeah. let them spend a wooden nickel. Yeah. You know, if they're into it, they're going to be into eating fruits and veggies from the farmer's market. Well, Megan, thank you so much <laughs> for everything you coordinate. Yeah. I mean, you're truly making food not just something we consume, but something we can really experience. Yes. And that is worth more than just about anything. So, so thank you for everything you do. 
So I am here with Don Meetinger today with Meetinger Market. And Don, tell me a little bit about what you grow. Well, we grow about everything you can think of. We do a lot of tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuces, greens peppers, onions, uh, snow peas, kale, a wide, wide variety of produce. But I think my main product is my tomato chips. They're made, we invented them on our farm. They're made right there on the farm. We slice them, spice them, dry them. We don't add oils, we don't add preservatives. So we add that all up and they're very healthy. So let me try one of these because okay. you gave me one earlier on and it's pretty incredible. So people really can use these as snacks, basically, snack for their kids. You snack them just like that, or you can put them on things like salads or pizzas. Or they're great in salads, soups. People make eggs with them, meatloaf with them, chilies. Just about anything you think of, you want to add that great flavor to. So our mission today is to tell people and hopefully convince them to get five fruits and vegetables in their day. And so can you tell me why that's important, especially for kids, to get that kind of... You know, by eating the local stuff, it tastes great, it's priced well, then they may even get motivated to grow their own, which would be even better. And so, you know, it just, you know, get the kids going on it and they'll eat it the rest of their lives. You start them on a chips and candy bars, that's what they'll eat the rest of their lives, so... Don, thank you. It's a really privileged meeting you today. I appreciate it. So I am here with Kevin in Great Harvest Bread. So Kevin, the main portion of the clip today and the message we're trying to get across mm -hmm. is to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables in a day. Sure. And I noticed with some of your breads that you mix really cool ingredients into them. So what are some of the breads that you make that have some fruits or veggies involved in them? Well, my favorite bread is spinach, red pepper, and Swiss cheese, yeah. which is really good. Um, <laughs> and good. I have a loaf always at home. <laughs> Um, we, throughout the year, we'll make different raisin breads or cranberry mm. breads or Those are my whatever. Favorite. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot right. of different things, yeah. So, can you tell me a little bit more then about just why it's important for kids to get involved in, in going with their parents to farmer's market? And if you walk down the, um, the sidewalk here, every farmer, producer, including us and those around us, are growing everything, are making everything fresh every day. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's so good to have fresh products. And can you talk a little bit more, sometimes there's a perception at a farmer's market that when you come, um, you can't, it's not like a grocery store where you can get everything. Can you talk a little bit more about just the variety that you see here where you could do a full shop? Sure, you can get everything here from something to uh, bread, to a salad, to um, different cheeses, meats, everything. Yeah. So, so it's not just a farmer selling lettuce, you know, it's, it's the whole complement that is on the table. That's awesome. Community Crops is another great resource for getting fruits and vegetables that are fresh and local and teaching little kids and adults how to grow their own food. So Ingrid, can you tell me a little bit about Community Crops and, and what you guys do in Lincoln? Sure. So Community Crops is a nonprofit organization that basically exists to help people grow food. So we do this with community gardens, our growing farmers training program, and then also a lot of youth education on both gardening and cooking. Great. And have you seen you know, any results from little kids or families who have started growing their own food and in terms of having healthier lives? Yeah, we definitely hear those stories all the time. So some families get community garden plots because they want to get their kids involved. Mm -hmm. Then the kids will eat the vegetables. We've seen that over and over. You know, if a kid is involved in growing the kale or the broccoli, they want to eat it or they at least want to try it. Um, and also just with our youth programs, we hear stories of parents coming back and saying, well, now my kids want all these greens at home. So um, that's been really great to see. So how many community gardens do we have around Lincoln? We've got 13 different locations um, with about 600 people gardening. Wow, that's incredible. And what is the process that you go through to be able to get your own plot? So to get a garden plot, you sign up February and March. We always encourage people to sign up early because the plots do fill up really quickly. And you can choose a location that's closest to your house. Um, our website's the best information. It's communitycrops.org, and it tells people where all they are and then how to sign up. Oh, great. And do you know if there are any other 
you know, cities around the country that do something similar to this, or is this unique to Lincoln? There are. There are a lot of different community garden programs all over. We've helped get some of the smaller towns in Nebraska started with community gardens, right. but there's lots of cities around that are doing similar programs. Oh, that's incredible. And can you expand a little more on your um, the, the program that you have to teach people how to be farmers? Sure. So uh, that came out of our community garden program because we had people that wanted to not only be gardeners, but they wanted to actually grow and mm -hmm. sell. And so we did, we do a series of classes in the winter all about how to start a business. And then from there, uh, the families can either farm on their own or they can farm at our training farm site. That's exciting. So one thing that we wanted to learn when talking with you today is about easy ways for us to incorporate greens especially along with fruits and vegetables so that we can get our five servings of fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables in a day. So I know you have prepared a, a demonstration for us on how to do a green smoothie and I would love to see how this works because I know I'm going to implement it in my day. All right. Well, we'll see if we can convince a few people to try some more greens. Yes. So. Um, I'm just going to do a really simple smoothie. This is something that you can add and subtract to as much as you want. Okay. Um, the main ingredients are some kind of liquid. Um, I'm going to do half water and half juice. Okay. And then some fruit, just because that gives it that sweetness, makes it um, something that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then greens. Okay. So I um, brought today, I've got kale that I got out of my garden. Um, so it's just some regular kale which you can easily get at the grocery store. And then I also have some carrot greens here, since carrot greens are also a really good nutritious um, green. So we'll put a little bit of carrot green in there as well. But you could use spinach, you could use Swiss chard, you could use leaves off of kohlrabi. There's all kinds of different greens that you can put in instead. So this is just one example. Great. And can you tell me why it is so important that we get these greens along with our fruits into these smoothies and into every every meal that we eat? Sure. So greens, especially kale and spinach, are the most nutritious vegetables around. They have mm -hmm. so many nutrients in them, so many vitamins and minerals. Um, they just can't be beat. There have been so many studies showing how wonderful they are. So just figuring out ways to eat more of them every day is just a really good idea. I think we all need to channel our inner Popeye <laughs> in us. And this would serve how many people? Um, this is about a serving for four. It depends how much you want. Okay. Um, you can, and you can also refrigerate the extras and have it later in the day if you Great. don't drink it all. So. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and start with putting the liquid in my blender. Um, I'm going to estimate about two cups of liquid here. It doesn't have to be exact. The blender, if it can't blend, will tell you and you can always add more. Okay. And why did you choose apple juice today? Um, it's just a good easy one to choose because it's sweet and mm -hmm. kind of, it's a good flavor. Most people really like apple juice. Yes, I sure do. But I'm using half water just so it's not getting too sweet because, mm -hmm. I mean, apple juice does have a lot of sugar in it. You don't okay. want to have too much sugar. So, so I'm just going to add in all my greens here. And then really need to blend them for a while to really get them <laughs> blended up. Okay. And this is a fun thing. I mean, get kids involved as long as, you know, they're getting some adult supervision to really get involved right. in making the smoothie. They love doing stuff with the blender. So now, why do you add frozen berries as opposed to um, just regular berries? You can do either. Um, the nice thing about using the frozen fruit is that it um, makes it kind of thicker because mm -hmm. it's a frozen consistency. This is quite beautiful actually, this green and this purple. <laughs> it looks absolutely, it looks cool. So bananas are a really good thing to add to a smoothie. Um, it makes it a little thicker and um, so it's just a good thing to add in. And you froze these bananas first? I did, okay. yes. Um, just uh, makes it, it's like an ice cube, it really helps mm -hmm. keep the whole smoothie cold, it gives it a really good kind of slushy 
yes. milkshake-y type texture. You can also use yogurt. I think just any non-fat yogurt's good. Okay. Um, add some dairy servings um, without the fat. So yeah. That would be really good. Great. Okay, we have a smoothie. And so how long do you usually blend this to? So the second part is probably about 30 seconds. You're, yeah. It's small, softer fruits and stuff, so it doesn't take okay. very long. Oh, I'm excited to try this. All right. Perfect. So it looks like we've got some friends to share this amazing smoothie with us. Can you guys give us your names? Eternity. Eternity and Bianca. Bianca. So have you guys ever had a smoothie with vegetables in it before? No. <laughs> okay, well here's your lucky day. So this is my first time trying it too. So you ready? Okay, so here's one for you, Bianca. And here's one for you, Eternity. Thank you. So we're gonna do it on the count of three, okay? <laughs> Here, let's cheers first. Cheers. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> really want to know what do you guys think about this smoothie? It's two thumbs up. How about you? It tastes really good. Ten thumbs up. Ten thumbs up. So would this be something you would eat in the morning for breakfast? Yeah. Or as much. a snack? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. It is. I mean, this is really one more way for all of us to be able to get our fruits and sneak in those extra vegetables. I know this is something I'm gonna try tomorrow morning, try to sneak some vegetables into my husband's breakfast routine, which I'm pretty excited about. Good, thank you so much for showing us this and thank you for what you do with Community Crops. It's just, you've done wonders around Lincoln. And thank you. we're excited to have you here. Great. I am here with Heather from Good Table Farm. And Heather, can you tell me what got you interested in growing your own food? Well, my husband and I were frequent farmer's market shoppers ourselves, especially after our daughter was born. So we did a lot of our grocery shopping at the farmer's market. And so when we moved back to Nebraska and had the opportunity to have some land of our own, we decided let's go ahead and grow that so that we don't miss out on the fresh flavor that you get and knowing what's in your food. And if we're going to do it for ourselves, we might as well do it for other folks. So. So tell me the unique way that you became, that you learned how to grow your own food. Uh, we did a lot of research and planning for years ahead of time and then we participated in the Community Crops mm -hmm. Growing Farmers Program, which was an excellent way for us to think about not just growing the food and how to do that, but also this as a business and how to make it successful and the different ways to distribute our product to people. And so that has been just a huge help in helping us feel comfortable in what we're doing and knowing that we're making it available to other people the best way we can. So tell me about what you are selling here today. Um, today we have had some different types of lettuce. We've had mm -hmm. some squash blossoms, which are something unusual that you can't purchase in the store. Um, every week we have eggs from our chickens. Um, they're free-range chickens, and they give us beautiful eggs. And, and we also have some beet greens available this week and mulberries. And so these are beet greens? They are. Mm -hmm. And what is the, what's a recipe that you can give us that you would use these in? Um, beet greens, you could use them, for example, in a pasta sauce mm. um, with some garlic and feta, and you would wilt them a little with some olive oil and put them over pasta, and it would be delicious. So what would you tell people who are thinking about starting to grow their own food but feel the hesitation because they, don't, they feel overwhelmed with where to start? Uh, start out small, pick things that you know you like to eat, um, and go for it. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is you only get a couple um, of the items that you're trying to grow, but at least you've tried it, and you can see what you did wrong and try again the next season. So. And you can do these kind of growing in your backyard, not to this level. Definitely, yeah, definitely. You could start on a much smaller scale or even just in pots for some of the vegetables. And how do you get your, um, your daughter, what is her name? Shona. How do you get Shona involved in growing? Um, she's very involved. Um, she helps us put the seeds in the ground. Um, she helps, um, she's always outside with us. And a lot of times that's where she eats her vegetables is just from straight from the garden or her fruit straight from the tree instead of sitting at the table. So can you give me an idea of four simple vegetables to grow for somebody who might not have a green thumb? I would say maybe radishes, green beans, zucchinis, summer squash, 
things that um, don't need as much attention during the season um, and t tend to take off on their own. So. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am so excited about what you've done. You're truly an inspiration to, I think, a lot of people that are going to be watching this show and have wanted to do this. And now that they see that you can start doing it at any time, even when you have a little kid in your life. <laughs> And so thank you. Great, it's been fun, thank you. Eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Why is it important to get that many fruits and vegetables in your day, and what do you do to get that in your day? Uh, it's important because it makes you stronger, your teeth healthier, and it makes you healthier. And I go to my grandparents' farm and I pick a bunch of stuff and I like raw potatoes. You like raw potatoes. What other kind of vegetables do you like? Um, cucumbers and tomatoes. And what about fruit? What's your favorite fruit? Uh, raspberries and strawberries. I know all of us have those friends that don't like to eat their fruits and vegetables. So what would you tell your friends who don't like to eat them? Just try them. Just try them. That's a very good way to tell them. And what would you say they should start with? Uh, cucumbers, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're really good. So I've had a wonderful day at the Faubourg Farmer's Market. I've learned that farmer's markets are great to get all of our servings of fruits and vegetables. And you can also, of course, find your meat and dairy and music. Please visit YouTube to see more episodes of 54321 Go in Lincoln, Nebraska.